Seches Nozir Daf Chavtes begins immediately following the Mishnah, the last two lines in Daf Chavches. The world will introduce a Machlekes of Yechad and Reish Lakish. The world have seven kashas on Reish Lakish. Then the Gemara will answer them. The Gemara will question the answer from a Brisa. And then the Gemara will try to show that the Machlekes is really a Machlekes Tanaim and discuss the Brisa that will be brought there further. So let's begin. We've seen in our last Mishnah that a father can make his son into a Nazir. The Mishnah also said that a father can make a son into a Nazir, but not the mother. The mother cannot make a son into a Nazir. So the Gemara asks, what is the reason that a father can make his son into a Nazir? Why is it something that you can do? Now, the Gemara says, it's a Machlekes of Yechanan against Reish Lakash, as coded by Rabbi Yehissi Rabbi Chanina. So Rabbi Yechanan says, it's a Halacha Lamesh Misinai, that a father can make his son into a Nazir, and all the halachas included in that are all explained by the fact that this is how the Lachal Mesh Messina was set up. The father could do it, and not the mother. The father can only make his son, and not his daughter. And if relatives protest and say they don't want it, then it's not chal, it's canceled. All the halachas all follow, because that is how the Lachal Mesh Messina set things up, and there is no explanation that we can give. Rish Lakish disagrees. Rish Lakish says this is chinuch. This is a mitzvah of chinuch. The father is educating his son in proper approach, in proper ashkafa, by making him into a nazir. So now the Gemara has to answer what is the reason for all the specifics of the halachas which we saw in the mission. The Gemara is going to go through it one at a time. We'll have seven kashas here. The Gemara's first kasha is why can the mother do it? If the whole issue is chinuch, let the mother make her son into a nazir as well. So my answer is, Rish holds, a father has a mitzvah of chinach on his son, a mother does not have a mitzvah of chinach on her son. The Rishayim point out other Gemaras that say that she does, and Rish Lakish obviously does not agree. My second, Kasha, why is it only a son? Same thing should apply to her daughter, to his daughter. So Gemara answers, is only a chiv chinach on a son, not a chiv chinach on a daughter. Gemara's third, Kasha, why only Nazirus? Why is there only a Chinuch of Nazirus? Nidarim as well. Maybe she should make Nidarim for him as part of the Chinuch. And I understand Rabbi Echanan, there was only Allah Mesh Misine on Nazirus. But according to Rish Lakesh, it should be on Nidarim as well. So the Gemara answers yes, it's true. You can make a Chinuch Nidarim as well. The bigger Chidush is that he could even do Nazirus, which withholds and restricts the sun. You can do that even just out of chinuch reasons, not only in the Dharam, which could potentially be something which is non-restrictive or has a fair, even replacement. So the Gemara asks in the fourth kasha, why should the relatives be able to protest? It's the mitzvah chinuch, what do the relatives protesting have to do with anything? So the Gemara answers, if they protest, it's a sign that this is not a chinuch. This is not a valid chinuch, it's not... He doesn't want it, or the relatives don't want it for him. This is not a way to educate your son. Fifth kasha, the Gemara asks, uh, why is it that when the Naziris ends, you're allowed to shave his head? Shaving the child's head is an iser doiraisa of hakafa sarosh, cutting off the payas. So, according to the it's only chinuch mitor banan. How could you violate the iser? So the Gemara answers that Rish Lakish holds that cutting off all the hair on the head is only an Iser der Abbanan. Cutting off just the payas is an Iser der Aisa. Cutting all the hair off is an Iser der Aisa, is an Iser der Abbanan. So you have a question here of doing an Iser der Abbanan for the sake of being Mekayim and Mishra der Abbanan, and Mechina, and Rabbanan allowed it, Rabbanan against Rabbanan. Similarly, the Gemara asks a six kasha. How are you allowed to bring the Karbanas at the end of Nazirus? If it's only Minyarbanan because of Chinuch, then on a Daraisa level, there is no Nazirus here, and there's no Karbanas, so the Karbanas are Chulun Lazara, which is an Isid Daraisa. So when Rashi says, Rashi holds Chulun in Lazara, it's not an Isid Daraisa, it's only an Isid Darabanan, and therefore it was allowed. Misham Chinuch. The Gemara's last Kasha is if he becomes Tame, and he ends up bringing birds, you bring a Chatas Ha'if and Oilas Ha'if, so the coin's going to end up eating the Chatas Ha'if. That's not a real carbon because there's no chi of carbon. And then the malika that was done, malika where the kayan prepares the chatas by severing its neck with his thumbnail, that's not an actual shechita. Doesn't count for shechita. So if it's a carbon, it's matir. But if it's not a carbon, so it's just a nevela. So how could the kayan eat that? That's nevela. So the answer is that Rabbi Yisim, Rabbi Huda, who's the one quoting Rish Lakish here. 
Well, the Gemara says it's Rabbi Yosi Barbi Chanina who's quoting Rabbi Shalakash, but he holds like Rabbi Yosi Barbi Huda, who holds that the Shechita of birds is a Din Derabanan. The Rais, you only have to Shechna animals. So the whole Din Shechita here is a Din Mid Rabanan, and therefore you don't have to worry about it on a Deraisa level, and Rabanan allowed it Mishim Chidach. Right now, the Gemara questions. That's the end of the seven questions we want to ask on Rish Lakish, but now we question is it true that Rabbi Yosi Huda holds that shechita of a bird is only made of butter. The Gemara quotes a b'raisa, he seems to say otherwise. The Gemara quotes a b'raisa, Rabbi Yosi Barabi Huda says, how do you know that there is a chatas ha'oif you can bring in a case of suffix? Suffix, if somebody is chayav chatas ha'oif, you're allowed to bring it. But if it's only a suffix, then the kahanam cannot eat it. Because on the tzad, although you're you're allowed to bring it, and it's not a problem of chul and lazar, on the tzad that you weren't chayav, but on the side you weren't chayiv, it's an avail, and therefore the kahanam cannot eat it. So how do you know that that's the halacha? You are allowed to bring it on after a rechum and azar, but you're not allowed to eat it because it might be an avail. So the Bryce says, you learn out of the pasuk hazav as zayvay la zachar v'la nekeva. You have hekesher between zachar and nekeva. Things that a man brings and things that a woman brings. Now, when a man is chayiv a carbon chatos for something vaday, and he's a suffix, whether or not he's allowed to whether or not he was over that avera, therefore it's a sahib whether he brings the carbon chatos or not. The halacha is that he brings what's called an ashem toloi, special carbon for a suffix chatos situation. So the drasha goes as follows: We link zachar to nikeva, just like a zachar brings a carbon where he's vade chayev. A woman also brings a carbon chatos where she's vade chayev the carbon chatos. Just like a man brings a carbon when he's a suffix, because he brings an ashem taloi, a woman also brings a carbon when she's a suffix, suffix zava, suffix yeledes, is allowed to bring a carbon chatos mi suffix. The chatois of the woman are not because of averas, they're because of the status of zava or yeledes. So now the Gemara says, <clears throat> just like the zachar, has to bring the same min for a vadai as for a suffix. So he has to bring a behema. If he was chay of a behema, chatos, he brings, and he's a suffix, whether or not he's chay of that, he brings a behema as an asham. So when a keva brings the same thing, a woman brings a chatos ha'oif for her ziva or for her yoledes. And therefore, if it's a suffix, whether or not she's chay of a chatos ha'oif, she brings a chatos ha'oif. Can't breathe something else. It has to be. It has to be a bird, just like the vadai would have been a bird, as you find by a zahar. So now the Gemara says. So maybe it should be eaten, just like a man's ashem tali is eaten. A woman's safek chatas ha'ayv should also be eaten. So now you say no, because a man's chatas ha'ayv, uh, a man's safek carbon, you're only risking one iser. You're risking chulin lazar. But the shechit is a regular shechit. The shechit of an animal for a carbon is the same as the shechit of an animal for a chul. There's no other iser. Um, Rebbe doesn't spell this out. He just says it's it's one iser. Uh, but for a nekeva, you have two iser. And therefore, you can't learn from a man that you're allowed to eat it. Because there's two potential iser. So what are these two iser? So the Gemara says the Pasha says these two iser are the iser chul and lazara and the iser nevela. So how are you telling me that Rebbe Yisrael the holds that there's no shechita? Obviously there is. There's an Isra Nevei that he's referring to over here. The so Gemara answers, no. Rebbe Yisrael is not talking about two Isurim de Raisa of Chulun Lazara and Nevei He's talking about there are bonons of Chulun Lazara and Nevei Because it looks like Chulun Lazara and it looks like Nevei And because of those two reasons, it shouldn't be eaten. The Gemara now wants to try to show that the Mechlech is Yechel and Reish Lakish. As to whether the reason that a father could make nazirs for his son is because of Allah Mesh Mesina or because of Chinach the Rabbanon, he wants to show that that's actually Machlekes Tanaim. And then the Gemara will show two ways to reject it that it's not dependent on the Machlekes of Yechon and So the Machlekes Tanaim is as follows. Rabbi said that says, until what age is a father allowed to make nazirs for his son? So according to Rabbi, it's until he's Bar Mitzvah. According to Yesi Bar Bihuda, it's until he's 12. Because from age 12, he's old enough to make his own nidar. He knows what he's talking about. He's intelligent enough. He may not be, he may not be an adult, but he's intelligent enough to make nidar on his own. And therefore, the father's nidar, the father's naziris doesn't count for him at all. So what's his mechlek is about? 
I don't want to say it should be dependent on our machlekes whether the reason a father could make nazirus for a son is because of halacha mashmi sinai, or it's because of chinuch. Rebbe holds it's halacha mashmi sinai, and therefore, even though he's old enough to make the dharma on his own, he's twelve, doesn't count because halacha mashmi sinai says that the father can keep making the dharma as long as his son is still his son, as long as his son is still a katan, as long as he's still in his rishos. And therefore, Rebbe, Pashtas Gemara wants to say, the reason that he holds it's until age 13 is because it's Halach HaMesh Mishinai. Rabbi Yisrael Behuda, though, who says that he can grow until 12, holds that it's because of Chinuch. Once he's 12, he can do it himself. He doesn't need your Chinuch anymore. And therefore, that would be the reason that he has to stop at age 12. So Gemara pushes this off, and Gemara says, no, it's not the Pshat. They could both hold like Rav Yechanan, and they could both hold like Rish Lakish. They could both hold like Rav Yechanan, and it's Halach HaMesh Mishinai. And the question is, what is the halachic status of what's called a mufla hastamach leish? Somebody who's 12, he's old enough to say his own nidarm, he knows what he's talking about, but he's not an adult yet. So Rebbe holds that that's a dirabonon halacha, and therefore as long as the father is making the dairaisa, remember, because halacha mesh is the dairaisa, as long as the father is doing dairaisa nidarm, it overrides any mufla hastamach leish that the child would do, which is dirabonon. And therefore, the father could do Nazirisan for him even until age 13, even though he's old enough to do Mufla Samach because the father is Daraisa and the son is Darabonon. According to Yisrael Behuda, Mufla Samach from age 12 to 13 is a Din Daraisa. Those Nadarm and Nazirisan have a Din Daraisa. And therefore, the son is on equal footing with the father and therefore takes precedence over the father because it's he himself. And therefore, he holds that the father can only make Nazirisan for him until he's 12. And where a second shot is to say, really, they both hold like. Um, they both hold that mufla. They both hold that the reason for the father making his for a son is because of chinuch, chinuch midurabanan, and they both hold that mufla samach ish is only durabanan from age twelve to age thirteen. There's a durabanan right. So Rebbe holds that the father can keep making his ears in until age thirteen because his durabanan of chinuch. Pushes off the Durabonon of Mufla Hasamach Ish. I see Yehuda holds that no, that Chinuch of the father does not push off the Mufla Hasamach Ish, and therefore he has to stop making his ears for him at age 12. And Gemara now wants to say this Machlek is Tanoim, which we saw. So whether the age that the father can make his ears is until 12 or 13 of his son is the uh, exact Machlek we find in another Brysa, where there's a Machlek how a story went with Rabbi Chanina and Rabban Kamuyel. As Mechlekes Tanakam and Rabbi Yossi, what the story was. So what we know about the story is that Rabbi Chanina's father made him a Nazir when he was a child, and he was brought to Rabban Gamliel to figure out if it's Chal or not. And Rabban Gamliel was checking to see if it was if he was old enough that it was Chal. According to the Tanakam, he was checking to see if he was a Gadol Deiraisa or not, that is, he was over age 13, he wanted to know if he had Shtei Saris, if he had two hairs, which is required to establish Godless Deiraisa Vadai. And Rabbi Yezus says in the summit, he was checking, he wasn't checking to see if it was a Gadol or not, he was checking to see if he was old enough to be Oynas Nedarim, if he had reached the age where he can make Nedarim on his own or not, even though he's younger, than Bar Mitzvah. So Mar says this lines up very nicely. Tanakam is learning like Rebbe. And therefore, in order for his own nidarm to work and his father's not to work, he has to be a gadol. And Rabbi Yaisi is learning like the Rabbi Yaisi Rabbi Huda, who says that it's dependent on whether he's reached the age of making his own nidarm of mufla samach ish, and it's nothing. It's not dependent on whether he had shtei saras or he's a gadol or not. So now the Gemara continues. The Brayso the Gemara says that Rabbi Chanina, the child, said to Rabban. Kamuel, don't bother checking me because it makes no difference because I'm going to take my own Naziris. If I'm young enough that my father's Naziris counts, so it's Chal. If I'm old enough that, it, that my father's Naziris doesn't count, then my Naziris counts. I'm making my own Naziris and that way I'm a Nazir either way. So you don't have to bother figuring it out. And Ravan Kamuel heard that. He stood up and he kissed him on his head and he said, I'm sure that this one is going to be a Meir Halacha when who Paskan Zalacha and Yisro. And it was only a short time afterwards, and Rabbi Hanina was already a Meir HaRav Yisro. So Gemara asks, the language that we have in our version of the Brisa seems to support Rabbi Yisro Behuda, because he said, don't bother checking me to see if I reached um, 
to be a katan uh, or gadol. <coughs> Because it's dependent on katnos or gadlos. According to the other approach, it should be if I'm old enough to be mufas amachleish. Why did he say if I, if I'm a katan or gadol? So where it says it will change the version according to that. The text should just read. Uh, it'll be I'll either say it for myself or I'll be because of what my father said, but without emphasizing the fact that he's a gadol or a katan. Gemara now has one final kash on Rebbe. And that is, Rabbi Hanina apparently reassured Rabbi Gamliel that everything would be okay because he was being Makabal and Naziris for his father, the Naziris of his father, and his own in Naziris. So either way, whether he was a Gadol or a Katan, or whether he was before or after the age of Nidorim, either way, he's going to fulfill the Chiv. So the Gemara's Kasha now is, well, hold on a second, what happens if he really became a Gadol or if he became the Middle Age in the middle of the period of Naziris. Now you have a problem because he never finished 30 day Naziris. If Naziris is calling him in the middle, he's only doing 30 days of Naziris. Naziris is going to be calling him in the middle. He's never going to finish it. So how can he tell Rav you don't have to check me if I'm a Gadol or Katan? Maybe he does because he has to know where he's holding. And if he becomes a Gadol or Katan, if, if he becomes a Gadol in the middle, now it's calling him his father's Naziris. Now, uh, now it's calling him his own in Naziris. Now he has to do 30 days from then. So according to Rabbi Rabbi Huda, you don't have a Kasha. Because according to Rabbi this whole discussion is when he's 12 or thereabouts. And the question is, when is he going to become the age of Nedarim? So the Allah is when a child becomes the age of Nedarim, a pre existing Nedar uh, um, cannot be Chal on him. That Naziris that he had upon him of his father doesn't fall off just because he became to the age of his own Nedarim. If, however, you're going to go like Rebbe. So it means that he reaches the age of Godless. That means he was already 13 and he was looking for Shtei Cyrus. So if he reaches the age of Godless, then if that happens in the middle of this period of Nazirus, his father's Nazirus falls off because he's no longer under his Shlita. Now he has to start keeping his own Nazirus from scratch. So you have a Kasha, how could Rebbe and Rebbe, how could, how, how could Rebbe Hanina and Rebbe Gamliel assume that they, that would be okay? It wouldn't be a problem. So Gamar answers very simply, he has to keep 60 days of Nazirus. He has to keep 60 days of Naziris. You have 30 days either way, Bahaka by Kok. Either you have 30 days before he becomes a Gadol or 30 days after he becomes a Gadol. It's got to be at least 30 days on one side or the other. And therefore, he fulfilled Naziris either way, and it makes no difference.